Well, Australia is reaching for the stars, unveiling a new campaign which sees our National Space Agency undertake its boldest adventure yet in partnership with NASA. Take a look. We've long been a land of explorers and adventurers, travellers and trailblazers. We've traversed all manner of terrains, chased the horizon in every direction, climbed higher, descended deeper, gone further. And still, the quest continues. There will always be more to explore. So, where to from here? We say, bring on the beyond. Our boldest adventure yet. Australia. We're going to the moon. What? All of us? Like on the <laughs> same spaceship? I mean, we need a lot more details. Well, this is what this project is about. <laughs> to discuss, let's bring in the head of the Australian Space Agency, Enrico Palermo, who joins us from Colorado, of all places, in the United States. Enrico, we're saying good day to the moon. Tell us about this historic mission. Good day and good morning. Yeah, this is a historic mission. It is Australia embarking on its first lunar mission. Uh, we're going to build and design here in Australia uh, a rover that's going to do a pretty important mission for NASA on the moon in the years to come. I mean, this, this is pretty cool um, that, you know, I mean, we're sort of really not, you know, central to the space race, obviously, in Australia. But the fact that we're building this rover, so it's going to be Aussie made. When is it actually going to land on the moon and what is it going to do? So we're targeting to launch the rover with NASA, who's going to fly it to the moon in 2026. And its job is, is relatively straightforward to start, which is to collect lunar soil, which is called regolith, and it's going to take it to a NASA plant. It's going to determine if we can extract oxygen. And if we extract oxygen, we can just have that sustainable presence uh, for humans uh, on the moon. So how soon after the rover lands do we, does civilization move to the moon? It feels like that's a natural yeah. progression. Well, <laughs> So, so NASA's, you know, working on, on the Artemis program, which we're proud to support, and, and you'll see Australia play a significant part in that increasingly in the future. They're saying this decade they will return uh, the first woman uh, and the first person of colour uh, to, to our moon. Because if it keeps raining in Sydney, we may need to go a little sooner, but that's something for everyone to have trouble with. The government's announced our first ever national space mission. It uh, comes with a, a pretty decent price tag, $1.2 billion. It's a lot of money. Is there still a purpose in going to the moon, given that uh, the Yanks got there more than 50 years ago? Uh, there's definitely a purpose to go to the moon. There's a purpose to invest uh, in this satellite mission. This is an investment in our planet, uh, in looking after our planet, in understanding our planet. Uh, so particularly for the satellite mission, uh, you know, we rely on satellites every day to know, you know, are you going to wear a jacket, are you going to wear a T-shirt, uh, navigate around our cities. And really by establishing our national mission, this is Australia moving from purely a consumer of space technology to an international contributor, which is just remarkable and an exciting and historic moment. I mean, how cool is space, huh? Um, Enrique, <laughs> I mean, wh where are you this morning? What are you up to? So I'm in uh, Colorado Springs in Colorado, probably the world's largest uh, space symposium. So there's 10,000 attendings here and I'm standing in uh, the Australia group. We have a large presence here, here this year, about 40 Australian companies. And really the message we are sending is that space is truly alive and ignited in Australia. It's a priority from government with its investment uh, in the national mission, for example, um, but really uh, making sure we use space technologies uh, to improve the lives of all Australians is, is a big part of our mission. Now, JFK famously predicted that they'd put men on the moon within the decade back in 19, the early 1960s. Now's the time for you to step up and make your JFK statement. How long until we have a plugger, a thong on the moon of an Australian? Well, one, one of the things we've been joking about, our rover needs tracks. And who knows, maybe we can design something uh, into the tracks of our rover that gives that first imprint uh, of a double plugger on the moon. So uh, I'm not going to predict a date for a plugger, but uh, we'll see humans uh, in our lifetime. And I think it's an incredible time. Uh, a, a space career in Australia is totally plausible. Whether you're a child, uh, you're going through high school, university or a professional, um, space careers are real. Uh, Australia is increasingly becoming a space-faring nation with the purpose to improve life here on Earth. Enrico, we appreciate your time this morning. Would have liked a date, but, you know, the next <laughs> best thing.